sweetie, sweetie, sweetie. Huh? Video, put it on off. Sweetie, put it on off. Oh my goodness. This, sweetie, this is a great one, no, no. Wait, we're gonna miss our chance. I know. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Let's go. If you want, they're not gonna see us. It's been like, oh my God, this is so good. Yeah. Even with. Okay, well, it is about 1.45 this afternoon, and normally it should be light, but instead it feels like it's almost, well, it's nighttime. What do you think about that? Oh, it's so great. We're having big eclipse right here in America. It's happening. It's been so dark, and now it's coming up. The light is coming. Here it comes. Uh, okay, we have our eyeglasses that we are yeah. so using. Show, show them what you look like in your eyeglasses. Okay, put, okay. Put those okay. babies Hold on. This. All right, here we go. Yeah, it just coming again. It just reached the the maximum darkness uh, just about a minute or two when we first came on, and it's already becoming just a more by the sign more is showing. light. Anyway, the Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows His handiwork. So God is showing His handiwork today, isn't He? Yeah, he is. Where is my phone? I want to... <laughs> the Lord is showing his handiwork. God is wonderful. This is like only God can make this happen. Yeah. I am telling you, no technology or anything can happen. Make this happen. Don't we love it. We're loving it. Don't look at We're it. it. Yeah, don't look at it. Don't look at it without these babies. <laughs> <laughs> so we're having a fun time, and uh, the, the the peak of darkness only lasted a, a few minutes, didn't it? About yeah, three or yeah. four minutes, and then yeah. it started getting lighter again. But still, it's darker than it should be yeah. this time of the day. So we praise God for His greatness, and what a privilege to serve Him. Amen? Amen. Please. Yeah, we thank God that you know this is really happening in our days. And uh, in those days, our mom and uh, um, our brothers and sisters told us that, oh, that market day. The night came. They didn't know what it was, but today we know it's eclipse and that um, God can make this happen. It was like um, right now, a little light and a little darkness, and then you could see the darkness, and now the light is back. We thank God. <laughs> Welcome to Beat Diabetes, and today we're going to look at how I do beating diabetes. A lot of times people get a little frustrated with me when I just say things like low carb and keto and keep those carbs down and they will say, we want specifics, Dennis. Tell us what is low carb? What specifically does that look like? What foods are allowed? What foods are not allowed? What, can I eat this? Can I eat that? So today we're going to get a little specific in terms of how I do it. Now, how I do it is not necessarily how everybody has to do it. As long as you keep those carbs relatively low and you employ some time-restricted eating, uh, you have a lot, of, uh, <laughs> a lot of opportunities and different ways to do that. So I'm not going to say this is how everybody should eat, but I'm going to say this is how I do. In case you wondered, how do you, Mr. Beat Diabetes, eat? Uh, to keep your glucose low, and uh, my uh, A1C is relatively low. It's around 5.0 the last few times that I have checked it. And so I'm quite happy with that. I could easily be a raging diabetic. I'm confident of that. My mom was when she uh, was near her death at the age of 80, and she did make it for a while, but it uh, wasn't a good quality of life, and her, her uh, blood sugar was up to 500 milligrams per deciliter when she went into the hospital that last time. Uh, I don't get near 500. I don't get near 400 or 300 or 200. In fact, I don't even like to get above 130. Uh, there was a time when I'd say, well, 140 is my limit. These days, it's more like 130. And even then, I'm not real happy. So <laughs> I've gotten stricter and stricter as I get older. But the question is, how do you eat then, Dennis? What do you do to get the kind of numbers that you get and the kind of A1Cs that you get. So, I'm glad you asked that question. I'm going to just share a few. This is not going to be too long of a video, but I want to share a few of the things that are my go-to foods and treats and things that I eat. You know, there could be thousands, I suppose, of low-carb and keto desserts, uh, diabetes-beating meals. And you can experiment and change and do combinations of different things. But we typically gravitate toward certain go-to meals and foods and treats. 
Uh, everybody does it, whether you're trying to beat diabetes or not. For example, I never remember my mom making us a pizza for dinner. Never. Not one time. Maybe she did, and I don't remember it, but if she did, it sure wasn't often. But um, I sure remember her making meatloaf. She made meatloaf all the time, and she had her certain go-to meals, cornbread and beans. Boy, that would be a disaster for me today, but that was one of her go-to meals. She learned to eat that in the Depression when you ate the cheapest possible foods. So we all have our go-to meals, our go-to foods, our go-to treats, our go-to snacks. We all have them. And when you get into a diabetes-beating diet and lifestyle, you're still going to have your go-to foods. They're just going to be different from most people's go-to foods. So again, the question of what do I do? How do I eat? And I'm not going to guarantee every single food that I'm going to share with you I eat every week. But I will say these are common. I've been doing these foods for years, most of them. And the ones that I haven't, well, I'm doing them now frequently. So let's go to the first food I want to share. And it's a very simple food. Here it is. And it is strawberries. Strawberries are one of, I call them God's gift, uh, one of God's gifts to diabetics because they're sweet, although not super sweet. And uh, they are just so good to use in so many, many ways. Now, some people say, well, they're just too tart for me. Well, that can be easily fixed by using about one packet of uh, some kind of a non-sugar sweetener mixed in with a few strawberries and boom, they'll be plenty sweet. But they can be used so many ways. And for the strawberry, you're getting the best bang for your carbohydrate buck than any of the other berries. You get more fruit, you get a bigger <laughs> fruit. For example, uh, a strawberry is about one gram. Now, this one is a bit large, so maybe it's one and a half grams, I don't know, of carbs. And a blueberry is one gram, but with a blueberry, you get this tiny little thing, extra sweet, of course, or more sweet than this, but you don't get nearly so much. So strawberries are a great fruit and I mingle them and mix them with all kinds of meals and uh, various food items that I eat. And that brings us to number two. Number two is the lowly mug cake, or should I say in my case, uh, ramekin cake. I think this is called a ramekin. Uh, I learned that from Joe Duff that uh, these things are pretty good to make mug cakes in. So I don't use mugs hardly anymore at all, but you can just get a big one. You don't want a little scrawny, tall, skinny mug or <laughs> it won't work at all, but get a big fat mug and you can make a mug cake. So let me give you the basics of uh, the, the basic mug cake that I use and then I'll show you uh, one way to kind of jazz it up a little bit. So to start with, you begin with an egg. One of the things I like in my foods and various things that I eat, uh, I don't like to take a lot of time. So uh, a lot of the time, just getting the ingredients together takes more time than actual, the actual cooking, especially with these mug cakes, because you make them in a microwave, a microwave, which means like 90 seconds, and you've got a muffin or whatever you want to call it, a mug cake. Let's go downstairs to our real kitchen to see how to make a mug cake. First, crack an egg and give it a good mixing. Add a half teaspoon of baking powder. Mix well. Add two to three teaspoons of non-sugar sweetener. In this case, I believe it was monk fruit. Mix again. Add a half to one full teaspoon of vanilla extract or fake vanilla extract. Mix some more. Add an oversized tablespoon of almond flour and an oversized tablespoon of coconut flour. And you guessed it, mix some more. This will take a little while. Add a couple of tablespoons of heavy cream and a couple of tablespoons of olive oil or coconut oil and mix some more. Spray your mug or ramekin with some type of cooking spray and then place the mixture inside and pat it down firm. Microwave for about 90 seconds, more or less, and you have a beautiful, humble, sweet little mug cake. So here we have it, a lowly mug cake. I call it lowly. Actually, I think it's pretty great, but uh, it's so simple. And there we go, came right out. Uh, it helps to spray the, the mug or the ramekin. And what I do these days, there was a time when I was even a little chintzier with myself. I'd cut them into these into four slices 
and use them one at a time with to put some things on there. But uh, in this case, I, these days I do three. So I'm going to cut it into three pieces. And bam. These are delicious all by themselves. Now you could spread some butter on there. I hardly spread butter anymore because I use real butter. Back in the day when I used margarine, I would spread it because it could spread. Nowadays, if I want butter on something, uh, I, I will often melt it in the microwave and then pour the butter on there because it's real butter. Anyway, you could just put butter on here or you could put butter and a little whipped cream, uh, make a strawberry shortcake, all kinds of things. These are so, uh, <laughs> they're so versatile and you can just use them for all kinds of things. I'll, I'll mention a couple of them. Anyway, the mug cake, it's your friend. Love it, use it, eat it. Make it again and again and again. You know, the kind of foods I'm sharing with you, these are foods that I will be eating the rest of my life. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm 70 right now, about to turn 71 in a few months. Uh, if the, the statistics hold for me, I've got 10, maybe 15 years to live, uh, if the Lord gives me that much. And uh, for those years, I'm well satisfied with these kinds of foods. So let's go on to another one of my go-to foods. Well, this is simple enough, simply coconut, but not the kind of coconut you may be used to. This is not sweetened coconut. Right there, boldly on the front, it says unsweetened coconut. And this shows that for two tablespoons, you've got four grams of carbs, which is not a, a negligible amount, but two grams are fiber, so they should not raise blood sugar. And it's not like I just eat this by the handful. What I generally do is put this on things. I can mix this with my chia seed pudding, and I can mix this with cereal. And uh, let me just talk about cereal for a while, and that becomes our next one of my go-to foods. I know you're shocked. You're gasping right now. You're saying, Mr. Beat Diabetes eats store-bought cereal, and it doesn't even say keto on it. Strangely, it, it says, eat your mouth off. That's the name of it. It says 100% plant-based. <laughs> That's kind of stupid because every cereal is 100% plant-based. Is there any cereal made out of steak or eggs? Uh, I don't think so. You say, well, are you totally comfortable eating store-bought cereal? Well, if I look at the nutrition inf information, it's only six grams of carbs per one and a quarter cups. That's incredibly low. I've never seen a cereal, store-bought cereal, that low. And five of those carbs are dietary fiber, which means only one gram in every cup and a quarter technically should raise your blood sugar. But even then, I don't entirely trust it. I just don't trust store-bought products uh, that say keto on them, even though this doesn't even say keto. It just brags about, about being plant-based. Cheerios could brag about being plant-based. Sugar-frosted flakes could brag about being plant-based. But here's what I do to kind of make it a little better and ease my conscience. Number one, I don't have a full bowl. Number two, I don't even have a full bowl of uh, a half a bowl of this. What I do is I just basically fill the bottom of my bowl with the cereal from the store. And then I add a couple of ingredients of my own. And one thing that always works with cereal is sliced almonds. In fact, they're kind of in the shape of a chip, a cereal, <laughs> a cereal chip, you might say. And so I add these freely, not too many, but some to give me a little more of the cereal. And then coconut, coconut, I love coconut. Now, if you don't love coconut, obviously this won't work for you, but I love it. And I like to add coconut to my cereal. So I'll just take a handful of it. I don't know what this is, a couple tablespoons maybe, maybe about two grams of carbs. Well, that's how much I will normally eat. Now that's not even a full bowl. This would never make a full meal for me, but it works beautifully with some other meal I ate and I'm still a little bit hungry and I want to have some coffee and something a little bit sweet to go with the coffee. Boom, here you go. Does not raise blood sugar hardly at all. Should not. You test it for yourself and see. You say, well, what do you do for milk? Well, I use part heavy cream. 
like I've shown you in other videos. And then I mix it with water. And you're getting very few carbs. Stir this baby up. And have a cup of coffee with it. And wow, a real treat. Should not raise your blood sugar much at all. This is what I do occasionally. Uh, probably at least once a week, sometimes twice. Uh, I will have my little version of cereal. Now, sometimes I make totally homemade cereal without the store-bought stuff at all. Using certain things, you could throw in a few nuts, you could throw in a few walnuts, a few pecans, a few whatever. Now, of course, it's got the, the almond slices in it. Uh, you don't have to give up on the idea of ever tasting anything sweet once you go low carb. I know there are the purists that tell you you should. You should just get rid of every last thing that's sweet. All I know is you can beat diabetes and still enjoy some sweet things. Not sugar, but there are other sweeteners. Okay, well, this is not a food at all, but speaking of sweetness, this is one way I sweeten coffee or perhaps tea, and it is liquid Splenda. And liquid Splenda is superior to the kind you buy in the bags because the dry granulated sugar, uh, Splenda is going to have maltodextrin or dextrose in it. They can raise blood sugar, often do. This is just pretty much the pure Splenda plus a preservative, but it does not have the maltodextrin, does not have the dextrose. And uh, I read in one of uh, Dr. Bernstein's books that the liquid Splenda is the way to go if you're going to need to sweeten something. Okay, the last go-to food for this episode, I'll probably do some more episodes along these lines because it's not that these are all I eat, but the last one for this one is a big old block of cheese. Cheese is low carb. Let me say it again. Cheese is low carb. This particular Nutrition Info says that for one serving, it is less than one gram of carbs, less than one gram. So you can't do much better than that. Now, let me say this. Cheese, as far as I'm concerned, is the new bread. What did you usually use bread for back in the old days when you ate bread, regular bread? You used it to fill up on. It wasn't the most exciting part of the meal at all, but it filled you up. And so you'd have a piece of bread or a bread roll or some kind of a bread product on your plate to help make up for what the meat or whatever your main dish was. Cheese serves that role now. A lot of times I'll make, I'll have a hamburger patty and uh, one hamburger patty won't fill me up, but if I cut off a slice of cheese, it will. And be sure and get one of those little cheese slicers that'll make it a lot neater than if you tried to cut it yourself and carve it up with a regular uh, knife of some kind. So you can use cheese as a side. No, I, if somebody served me <laughs> for my dinner a bunch of slices of cheese and that was it, I wouldn't be too excited. I like cheese, but not that much. Not so much that I would want to eat it as the only thing I ate for dinner. But when I have something else that's a little more exciting and then cut a slice or two of cheese to go with it and help fill me up, then I'm good with that and I do enjoy it. I want to remind you that we've grouped certain videos together into series that are available for you to download on your phones or computers. Out of the many hundreds of videos I've made about diabetes, I put together three series that I consider to be the most important and fundamental for the newly diagnosed diabetic who is desperate to get their blood sugar down in a hurry. First is the original series I call the Diabetes Emergency Kit. Second is the series titled More Fundamentals of Beating Diabetes. And third is my latest series called Beat Diabetes in Six Months, and these are videos specifically created from our Beat Diabetes challenges. There will be a link in the description that will take you to where you need to go to purchase any one or all three of these Beat Diabetes series. You can watch the videos immediately on your phone or computer, and you can also download them. Also, I give you permission to copy these files, put them on a flash drive, and share them with someone you care about.